Hello, everyone. I think I'm here. I think I think. Let me know if you can hear me. I don't think I'm on. No, nope, I'm not on mute. What? No. I'm not yelling at you. No. All right. This has been a week for live streaming, man. It's been crazy. Cassie, thank you so much for becoming a, a member of the channel. I appreciate it. There we go. Good morning. There you are. Yeah, I'm here finally. Two reboots of the modem. All right. This weather has been crazy. And uh, we have a lot of flooding up front. I, what is up with this piece of hair? It's like curled and it won't stay down. Oh, well. Good thing I'm getting it cut before I go to Indiana. All right. I quickly jumped on here. So I have to find all of my stuff. So just bear with me. Um, glitching. Of course I am. Of course I am. Of course I am. Okay, I am coming to Indiana. I am leaving next Thursday, so I'm excited. I will be driving all day Thursday, then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I will be in Indiana and then coming home on Monday. It takes me, with all the stops that we have to make for bathroom breaks and gas, it takes me almost eight hours to get there. So I am excited to come back to Indiana. All right. Elijah Vu. I was hoping that this child would have been found by now. Um, but alas, he has not. What do you mean unless I get lost? I don't get lost very often anymore. Only when road construction closes my road down. Okay. So... Because of the weather, the searches were called off. Um, I can tell you that we got snow one night and one day. The next day we got snow. After that, um, we got rain all day the next day and evening. And then today it has been snowing again. Yeah. Yes. Down under with love. You caught that. You caught that, didn't you? Anymore. I used to get lost all the time. We had a lot of rain this week. And yes. Yes, I agree. Um, I know you guys had some snow down there too, didn't you, Cassie? A little bit of snow, but a lot of rain where we've been getting a mixture of both. Lollipop. Yes. There are three memorial walks the weekend that I am coming to Indy. Um, on Friday, there is a Friday, uh, April 5th in Tipton, 
There's a memorial walk at 5.30 p.m. Um, at the Tipton City Park for Tabitha Shuck Rains. The next day on Saturday the 6th, there is a memorial walk at the Monin High Bridge for the Delphi Girls. And I believe that one is one o'clock. And then on Sunday, there is a memorial walk for the Floor Four in Indy at the cemetery that they were buried in. So we are we are having three walks back to back, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. About three inches. Okay. So you got less than we did. It, Down Under says I can drive eight hours and still not leave my own state. That's crazy. You're welcome. Okay. So because of the weather, um, there were no search efforts on Monday or Tuesday for clues in Elijah's disappearance. The family has posted a new schedule um, that is online. Okay, that's awesome to know, loves. Um, there's another day of rest on. Search teams will go to uh, Wednesday and Thursday after meeting at Manitowoc's Medico Theater. And I have been there. That's where I met the family. Very nice people, everyone. Very nice people. Um, I can't tell you, with everything that they are going through and, and coordinating all of these searches, I can honestly tell you that they're, they were so appreciative of all the people that were coming to the theater to get locations to search. And I can also tell you that they were worried about each and every single one of us because they said, make sure you have our phone numbers. Um, and at the end of the day, we want you to call us when you're done searching one so that we know you're okay and two, to get a list of areas that you searched. Um, and I, I talked to Linda and I told her that I was a YouTuber and that I was trying to keep Elijah's story alive on this channel. And she gave me the biggest hug in the world. And it was phenomenal. And then on top of that, you know, we're coming and we're, we're trying to help the family. And the family is like, here, we have food, we have drinks, get some food, take some food with you, take drinks with you. You know, they, with everything that they're under, they don't have to worry about taking care of us, the, the volunteers that are searching, but we appreciate it. And um, we know that it means a lot to them. So there is another vigil on the 6th in Fond du Lac. Okay, loves, if you can get me that information so that I can put it up on the community page, um, I would love to do that. The 6th at 7.30. So if I am in Indiana, it's going to be 8.30 Indiana time. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to be there that's going to record it or be able to go live, come on the show and, and go live and show us the vigil, but we can work all that out. Get a hold of me if you are going to. Yeah, and, and you guys got to realize that this family did not get a chance to know this little boy um, at the age of six months old. He was he was taken from them by the mother, and they weren't allowed to see him at all. They haven't seen him since he was six months old. And But that doesn't stop the fact that they love him and that, that, is their, that he is their grandson, and they wish nothing but the best for him. Um, I can just imagine how heartbreaking this is for them with all the time that has passed now. And, um, I just hope that we can find Elijah 
and bring them home to them so that they can have their traditions and um, at this point have a proper burial for them. I always keep hope, but reality has set in. Um, just so everybody knows, there is no plans to search on Easter Sunday. They want you to spend that time with your families. So the biggest thing that has happened since I've talked to you about Elijah is that his blanket was found. And they sent it for DNA testing. They got it back and it was confirmed through DNA that it was his blanket. Now, I found that out after I came back from searching. And what I found out is the very first area that I hit is close to where that blanket was found. So they said, um, so Two Rivers is about 90 miles from Milwaukee. And Milwaukee is just north of Chicago. So if, if you want to know where you're going, that's the area. Yes, I am in Wisconsin, Lisa. You live in Madison. Okay. Um, Two Rivers is actually a... I call it a fairly big city because my city is small um, and there's so many roads that you can go down in areas. I mean, these cities are, aren't a big, big city, but to me it's a bigger city because of where I live. And it's three cities in a row, Mishkot, Two Rivers, and Manitowoc. You don't have to go very far to get to each one. So if that helps, um, so Two Rivers Police Chief Ben Meenert said on Facebook that the red and white plaid blanket Elijah was said to have had with him when he disappeared was found on Goodwin Road in a rural area between Manitowoc and Two Rivers. And that's why I was saying that these three towns connect. Um, about 3.7 miles from where he was last seen. So that's key. When I have been searching for him, I have stuck close to Two Rivers in Manitowoc. I have searched Mishkot, um, but I have been staying more in the Manitowoc Two Rivers area. Um, Today we can confirm the blanket is Elijah's blanket. So um, Katrina Bauer and Jesse Vang have been charged with child neglect. Jesse Vang asked to have the charges dismissed. That's not going to happen. Not after all everything they're finding out. Bauer was charged with being a party to the crime of neglecting a child as well as two counts of obstructing an officer, according to criminal complaint. She told the police she left her son with Vang on February 12th to teach him to be a man and planned to pick him up um, February 23rd. But... On February 20th, Jesse Vang reported him missing. Said he fell asleep and woke to find the child gone. Um, Elijah's mother intentionally sent that child for disciplinary reasons for more than a week to the residence. 
she was aware of the tactics and the lack of care provided. She was fully aware of this and she agreed to it. So I think the last time we talked, they had, were asking about the car. Um, and they just wanted people to, to check their cameras to find out what direction the car was going. Not who owned it. They already had that information. He was three years old, Lollipop. Three years old, and they were going to teach him to be a man. Um, don't you have to let him be a kid for as long as they can be in today's world? I kept telling my kids, don't be in a hurry to grow up. Enjoy your childhood. They didn't listen to me. Now they're telling me, we understand what you went, meant, Mom. Yeah. So police have urged everyone to check their properties. Um, check in town, check all the rural areas, including water, to find Elijah and locate any evidence related to his disappearance. Yeah, Andrew says, I know adult men that aren't even a man. Exactly. So this is the only evidence that we have heard that they have found besides that car. And they're not giving out any information on the car. So They have been searching wetlands, farmland, the West Twin River, and a farm waste container. They've searched dumps. Um, the reward has risen to $40,000 from multiple local donors. Thank you absolutely to those donors for that reward fund. So it does say police have um sifted through large amounts of dash cam and security cam video after they appealed for an image of the 1997 beige nissan ultima and um they were looking for between the hours of 2 p.m to 9 p.m on february 19th the day before he was reported missing that's very important you guys that tells me that that's when something happened to little Elijah. And they borrowed this car to take him and put him wherever they put him. And then the other information that has come out of this case, which is even more horrified is the mother of missing three-year-old Elijah is facing additional child neglect charges relating to her six-year-old daughter. So this just didn't happen to Elijah, unfortunately. He is the one that is missing. But when it comes to neglect, she equally neglected both kids. So she has additional charges on her for her six-year-old daughter. She made her initial appearance in Manitowoc County Court Thursday, where Judge Robert Dwayne denied her request for bond reduction. Thank you, Judge, for be having common sense. Prosecutors filed an additional neglecting a child charge and chronic neglect of a child charge against Bauer. And that's because they can now prove that she neglected both children. There's also evidence that on February 14th, she left her six-year-old unattended in a vehicle for approximately an hour in cold weather. Now, Cassie um, loves, you both know what Wisconsin's like in the wintertime. Um, this Winter has been mild, thank God, but 
depending on when this happened, temps can get 30, 40 below zero with the wind chill factor here in the winter during the day and night. So no one should be leaving a child in the car for more than one minute, two minutes maybe. They shouldn't be leaving a child in the car whatsoever. We know what happens when children are left in cars. It's not good. Um, the complaint claims Bauer's phone showed her at Jesse Vang's apartment just before 3.15 a.m. This is in the wee hour, early hours of the morning. On February 14th, according to the complaint, phone data shows Bauer messaged Vang saying her daughter can sleep in the car. Bauer's phone doesn't leave Two Rivers until roughly 4.30 that same morning. So she went to get a booty call and left her child in the car. Now, it was cold at that time, but it wasn't those severe temperatures that I was talking about. Um, I believe if I remember correctly, we were we, well, I should say we, but even me being where I am and Cassie and Loves being where they are, the temperature can fluctuate quite a bit. We up here were probably in the tens, twenties maybe, um, which means you guys were probably 20s to 30s which is still cold so you got to remember this car wouldn't have been running it's metal cars get cold fast and this little girl was sleeping in the car here we go um records from the national weather service showed the temperatures on the 14th was a low of 27 degrees and a high of 36. And at 3.15 to 4.30 that morning, this little girl was in that car. They need to let me at this woman. They really do. In addition, prosecutors say they have evidence that on February 16th, Bauer left view unattended for at least an hour as she and her boyfriend traveled to other locations through Manitowoc, not seen with the child. So where was this child? Remember, the 16th was the last day that Elijah was seen. Did they keep this six-year-old child and Elijah in that apartment while they went gallivanting across town? Makes me so angry. Makes me so angry. Lollipop the... The blanket was found in between Two Rivers and Manitowoc, 3.7 miles from the apartment. Okay, I'm going to come back here. Um... About three inches of snow. The vigil. Yes. Down Under says it's wonderful to hear he actually has family who love him. Yeah. Because you guys got to realize this little boy and this little girl never really had a chance in life. They've got a mother that doesn't take care of them, that doesn't 
truly love them. I'm going to say that because she neglects them. She may love them in her own way, but doesn't truly show them unconditional love. I don't know if the girl's father is the same as, Je as Elijah's father, but we know Elijah's father is in jail. So there's issues there. And then you have the boyfriend, and we know what he did to Elijah. So Linda and her family who are looking for him are the only ones I feel that truly care about this little boy. Yes, justice for baby Elijah, exactly. Jesse's washing machine was taped off for evidence. I'm not surprised. Yes, that is what we all think, Lollipop, but we also think the mother was involved in disposing him. Um, in my opinion, he, can, he can't be that far off from his blanket. Yes. And I'm going to show you video of where I was on Saturday um, in that area. And we're going to take a look at the map to see how far off I was from where that blanket was found. I've always said that he is no, no further out than 10 miles from that apartment building. But I felt that it was even closer than that. I was actually going like a six, seven mile radius out. Yeah, her six-year-old daughter. They're both in the right place. These poor kids, yes. Cassie knows. Minus 20 to minus 35 in February. And it can get colder than that in February. Um, yes, Jackie, another February 14th. I never realized, Cassie, how windy it was there. So the two times that I have been there, you take the temperature outside and drop it by a lot because of the wind. It is cold. I would have to go outside to smoke from the hotel, and I would be hiding by the pillar, and... I'd have to keep walking around the pillar because the wind was swirling around every which way. It was awful. And it's like that a lot of the time. There wasn't very often that there wasn't wind blowing. Makes me absolutely furious. Yeah. Google gave you a, hor a horrible map. I'll show you. Um, just don't understand why these parents out there killing these kids or doing whatever they're doing with them is terribly sad. Yeah, and like I said last week, I think last Friday when I had my late night chat, it's happening faster and faster than we can handle these kids being taken from us. Um, it's just rampant right now, and it's... You know, it's sad when it happens every once in a while, but you're talking on two a day um, or a week and sometimes three a week with the missing people included in that. She should have been a cop. She chases the same guy as he does. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't hear about the washing machine either, but I'm not surprised because I'm sure that they went over that apartment with a fine-tooth comb. And if he, most apartment buildings have a little area with a washer and dryer. So I'm sure that they are tearing those apart. 
she must have been or she would be singing exactly. A grid search needs to be done from the area where the blanket was found, weather permitting. I agree. And they need canines out there. This little boy has a heaven scent and only three years old. This makes my stomach, me sick to my stomach. Yes. That's why it's called Cool City because of the wind. Okay. Marv, are you going to be at the memorial walk for Abby and Libby? Yes, I will be. Um, oh, there's a photo of the washing machine put online. Interesting. Let's see. Did you post in Facebook or somewhere? I'm curious to look at it. Well, let's see if we can find it. Um, Jesse Vang washing machine. Images. I don't know if this is it or not. Um, share screen. All right, let's see. Oh, there you go. There it is. And it's exactly what I kind of thought. It's in a laundry room. Yeah, they're going to take that thing apart and search it. Niece and husband are foster parents in Wisconsin. They're amazing parents to some of the luckier ones. Yes. So there you go. Okay, while we are on... While I'm on Facebook, I'm going to show you some things that we took. One's a washer, one's a dryer lollipop if you're going to get the best evidence it's going to be from the washing machine versus the dryer okay if you follow the psychic sleuth which i do and i've talked to her about this case one of the things that she saw said was she saw a lighthouse now, this is right not too far away from Goodwin Road. And I thought, what the heck? I'm not sure what kind of building it is, if it's a guest house or what. But um, that reminded me of a lighthouse, so I took a picture of it. This 
is the area right to the right of that. It's a kind of like a field, but they've got trails and then there's woods back here. It's the Henry Wetland Restoration Project. So I did not actually walk through this area that day, but I did stop and take a sign of it. And the reason I took a sign of it is because the lighthouse would be over here and over here was a metal building. And that both of those things were in the psychic sleuths um what do you call it that was one of the clues she gave us now when i left the hotel and i put in the gps took me to water here's the the ocean over here waters on my left town is on so then you right. have the double road and you have town right that was clues in her visions also if I quite turn here yet or not. <laughs> okay. So you, you got to drive down this way a ways, a little bit. And then Yep, I'm coming to Water's that castle. On my left, town is on my right. I think I hit the same video. Hang on. I did. No game. This is after we turned and psychic sleuth gave us the address of I think 2500 2500 Woodland Drive. So this is the road I'm on. And I get to where the GPS says you're at Woodland Drive, which is pretty much all these woods, right? So mm -hmm. we get to this, we turn and we get to trail. this area. This is the Woodland Dunes. And we're like, interesting. And it's just acres and acres and acres of woods and trails. And when Psychic Sleuth saw this video, she said she got nauseous. So this is taken off of my cell phone. No mushroom picking, Jen. Okay. So if you think you're picking mushrooms, forget it. My sister picking on me. You can't smoke them either. <laughs> okay.
This is the sign that we were just looking at. Natural area. No foraging or mushroom, or mushroom picking. picking. All right. Now, as you can see, hang on. As you can see, I want to show you something here. If I can... Okay, do you see how that water is standing there? That is like that all over in this area, and this was before they got the snow and all the rain. So it's going to be important to let this dry up a little bit or get a search team with searchers who have muck boots that can walk through this stuff. Okay, um, and we basically got to go from this area all the way back to the main road, which isn't that far, and cover this whole area. But this is what it looks like when you first get out here. It's this bridge, basically, is what I call it. And I don't know if it goes in a circle or what it does, but it goes all over. It branches off into different directions, and there's so much woods to cover, it's not even funny. Ducks, ducks. In, the water in the water over there. Yep, and Cassie says, um, I was... Over in that same spot, too, a few days before the last snowstorm came, if you go up the road a little bit more beyond the barricade, there's another public access point. That's good to know. I didn't even know that. And that point has walkways over the water, tons of frogs, lots of clues that match. Yes. But you'll see, I mean, look at the water in here. And it's going to be worse now that it's rained. So we walked on this, I call it a little bridge walkway thing. Um, we did get down a couple times and go in the woods. And you'll see that in this video. But what I want to tell you is once you get off this bridge, there's all these trails that you can go on. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And it's, it's crazy. You can go in every which direction and there's trails through it, all of it. So you almost have to have 100 people, have them go in a line, be um, spaced out, no, and start walking leaning. through here. And you're going to have to look under all these piles of sticks and branches and stuff like that. We were, we were um, picking on their fencing by their trees. Because we know from living up here that that's yeah. not going to stop the deer from eating them. Oh, here we go. We're leaning the other way now. Yeah, and this this little walkway is very, it's not straight. You lean one way, you lean the other way. Um, okay. It's a very, like very beautiful off, area. Here. Like I said, it Which splits way off. want to go? Let's see. And, um. I can imagine this would be Trillium one of the birch black cherry. Okay, wait. I wanted to hear that. Yellow birch trail. I don't know. Let's, don't know. Let's go see what cherry. cherry. Black cherry or trillium trail. I was trying to figure out know. if Psychic Sleuth said something like. about yellow birch. And I couldn't remember if she did or not. But like I said... You could be on this walkway and and it just keep it goes all over, right? Different drop, take this way, take that way. But then you can also get out of this and just walk the woods.
Okay. Is there any way from getting deer to stop eating baby pine trees? They pretty much eat what they want. You would have to put a really high fence around them that is not close to the tree. Um, black cherry is the other one behind yeah, the I'm barricade. So. She was I'm mentioning the, the yellow one. That's what I thought. Trees to regrow. I don't know that. That's I don't know that that's gonna, gonna stop, stop a deer. deer but <laughs> I don't think that's gonna Being northern Wisconsin girls, we're talking about the fencing and the trees, but um. So anytime we see the uprooted trees like that or big, big piles of sticks and tree branches over it, we will go and search those areas. We'll actually take tree branches off and dig in those sticks so until we can see the bottom to make sure search parts of this. that Elijah is not in there. Boots. And... Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. There's little steps, there is little that, go steps that go off yeah. here. So, so that you can, so that go, you down can go down in there. And this this is what their woods is like. It's like this all over the place. So you really have to stop and slow down and pay attention Careful. and make sure that you look in little, and under little. everything. Um, black cherry don't come back is the other one team. behind. Them. Okay. Yeah, I am the SWAT team. team. Yes, there's so much to check, and it's not even funny. I'm telling you, there's probably miles and miles of trails that you could search. Taking a metal detector through there. You're looking in all these trees, huh? I I would just as long as you don't dig things up, you'll be fine. So I take this as a spot that they have not checked. Oh, they've they've checked it, but you don't know how Definitely well they've here. checked it. Some is dry, some is wet. And like I said, they checked it, and then the water's gone down. Well, now it's gone back up. Um, like Cassie was saying, because they've got all that rain and snow yep. and it's mixed things up. Um, it got windy, so it moved things around. Oh, I get. So we really, we really do oh, need man. to take dogs to this area and search the hell out of it. Fifteen hundred acres, exactly. Sorry, sorry if it's shaky, guys. I'm trying my best. Sorry, my daughter was calling. I'll have to call her back. But I just what I'm showing you with these woods. This is where this is what it's like there. everywhere there. Shit. Shit. <laughs> I know. I know. I know exactly where you want to go back to. So Paul kept telling me, I don't feel him here. I don't feel him here. He's not here. And that is going to stop today. Climbing over trees. <laughs> Careful. Don't get a twig up your you know head. I had a twig jump up and bite my leg. So this is over so this by, 2, by twenty five hundred. Woodland. Woodland. Ave. Ave. This is one of this the sections, of the sections that we, that we wanted to look at. I'm going to just fast forward here a little bit. 
because we get back up on this thing and walk around. Then we get to go. Then we get to go for a nice walk. Paul says. Paul says here. he's not here. Yep, she told me that right away. He's not here. Well, I know. Well, I know he's in the woods somewhere, the woods just, somewhere not just not say. here. You say. I know. I know. Oh, that would be a good idea, Cassie. So we're walking along this bridge. At some point, we get off the bridge and we get on these trails. And so I can see the schools utilizing this a lot. We don't know where we're going. In the, you know, once all the water's gone. Look out. Once all the water's gone and the leaves come up. Um, I'm sure they do too because you can look for different leaves and all that. So like I said, we got off this bridge thing and we started walking the trails and, and we got lost. Lots we knew what direction to go in in order to try to find the car. Um, unfortunately, we ended up on private property and had to walk the road back to get to the car. I was hoping, right? Yeah. So we're sorry, people, that we trespassed on your property. Yeah, we can always backtrack. Yeah, this is where we we get down and we start walking the trails. Yeah. And there's multiple trails out here, you guys. Multiple trails. And it's 1,500 acres. There's the bridge we were on. Now we're on a trail. Follow well, this trail down a little bit. This part is dry. I mean, like I said, this would be a perfect place to bring the schools for like a school That's forest. As long as people know what trail they're on and how to get back to where they started. You know, with adult supervision, the kids would love it out here in the summer and stuff. <laughs> Oh, so this must be the Black Cherry Tree Trail, and so they have these signs everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you would have to do a grid search along with cadaver dogs, absolutely. But I just want you guys to see what the area is like. Because if you're truly going to search it, you have to go off the trails and you have to get in the woods and look under it, everything. Lots and lots of uprooted trees. You notice that? How far away is that from here, Cassie? Vetter Trail versus the Woodland Dunes. That's what I'm assuming. No, this is perfect weather. All right, let's see what I have here. Okay. This is our main area that we keep going back to this is off of vv it is within five miles of the apartment um in psychic sleuths things she talks about the fire department well that's behind me she talks about the Ring of Fire. That's a bar right next to the fire department. And then 
you come on highway B here. And there's a girls camp. There is a big rock quarry here. Searching in there. And there's another entrance for the rock quarry up here. One is closed, can be closed by a gate. The other one is wide open. Right, right. So we were just driving down the road because I wanted to see what area was beyond the Girl Scout. camp and the girl scout camp is where my sister feels elijah this is the the opening for the quarry is this a quarry loaders have the right of way and it's open there's no gates here and the thing i checked on is that this quarry is connected to the quarry next to it by like a they made a like a road or bridge or whatever and I believe from that quarry, you can get to the camp roads beyond where it's gated off. And obviously, big rocks. Yeah. I think it's interesting that that one fence thing is open today. Or the. Yeah. This is, she swears, this is where she feels him. Yes. This is right across from the farm that Katrina lived at. Yeah. Yesterday, both of these like that was closed. And now today, this one down here is actually open. So I've been in here now with two different rental cars. And, um, this last time we did go off this way and search in here a little bit. So since the gate was open, I drove down it. <laughs> now. There's going to be a road that comes up over here. I believe that is where the road that we take. No. That is the road I believe that will take you to the gravel pit. Nope, this is where we turn we do turn in here. Right before that is where there's a road off to the right that'll take you to the, the gravel pits, the quarries. I don't know that he would have been able to. Yeah. I mean, don't think he was three years old. He weighed 50 pounds. So if somebody really wanted to get in here, what I'm saying is they could. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah, he's 50 pounds. So I just turn around and, and go back because she was getting nervous. She didn't want to get want us to get in trouble. Yes, they're still searching. Um, I know they opened up the Girl Scout camp the first week and allowed people in there, but I'm not exactly. We don't know how far back anyone went. Now, I am going to tell you that right after the gate on the left hand side we saw this it's a bunch of tree branches 
and it's got a bunch of sticks underneath it. If you see something like this and you are searching, you have to take those big tree branches off. Because Paula did have a vision or whatever she sees. And when you took the tree branches off, you found them. And Katrina would know how secluded it was. Makes sense to bury a body there. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's cameras there or not, but I know that they know I trespassed around it. And I didn't mean to. It was just I was trying to get Paula was feeling her feelings and um, as we went back further, her heart sped up more and more. So I wish that they would let us in there to search because I think if we took her there and 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 opened it up and let her in there there is a good chance she would find them thank you so much Jackie for the super sticker I appreciate it so much I think Katrina also mentioned something like if Eli if Elijah made it to shadow he would stay there yes this is shadow area. It absolutely is. Absolutely. Okay. I'm trying to remember what video this is. I think this is in the Michicot area. We were driving to a location that we were going to check. Okay, this is the weirdest thing in the world. We have completely lost the camp. Yeah. Well, I, well, I think we're on the right road, though. Yeah, we were going around the camp, taking all the back roads, right? Trying to figure out if there was another way into the camp. And I got totally lost. Got myself all turned around. So anywhere I could look to try to, to find the road to get towards that camp again, I was trying, but I hit all these dead ends. Maybe that's why every time I went by that gate, Cassie, those people in those house, that house was looking at me like that lady's back again. Why does she keep coming back here? And that's because Katrina used to live there. I'm sure that if we went to the camp, well, they only... I guess we could ask the camp if we could search there. And I mean, search more than just the front of it. It would depend on what they would say. What's the worst? They could say no. <laughs> you guys drive on the other side. I'm sure for us, it would be like, what is going on? Yeah, she would be comfortable there. She would know that area. So I am trying to find
Okay. <clears throat> so this was an area that Psychic Sleuth talked about by the boat landing in Manitowoc. So I did come here. And I took a walk. Very windy. But one of the things that I wanted to see is how you could get around this river. Because people said you can be on both sides of it. And as I started walking down the trail, I realized the trail, good God, the trail goes all the way around. And you can actually walk on both sides. So the woods that you see over here, so the woods that you see over here, you can actually walk. There was people walking. You can see a trail right here. So this is the little dock. And what's eerie, let me see if I can, there we go. What does that remind you of? For all of you that follow the other stories that, I, that, that we cover, what does that remind you of? Does that remind you of the Monon High Bridge? It did. It, that's what it reminded me of. And trains are actually still crossing this bridge. Yep. Delphi. Exactly. It was so eerie to see that. Look how cute they are until they run after you. <laughs> They've got a path. So here. there's this path. It goes all the way down and around. They were having some kind of St. Patrick's thing here. Leprechaun hunt in progress. But it goes down and all, all the way around, and then it takes you on the other side. Falling down. So I'm like, how interesting is that? But then I thought about it. And besides Paula saying, nope, he's not here either. Um, I thought, that's too much work for them. It's too much work. It's too far out. This is too far from the apartment building for them to come and actually put them here. <coughs> oh, it did give me chills seeing that train trussle. No, I think somebody may accidentally stumble across him. My fear is that if he is in that girls' camp, it could be one of the girls that find him, that just happened to stumble across him. That's my fear. The quarry, um, I'm sure they looked around it, but it's pretty much just a big hole <laughs> with different sand and rock. and It's big, though, that's for sure. But I don't think they would have put them there because there's too many people around that area.
Jack says, Marv, I want to give a big shout out to you for going out here, doing what you're doing. I wish I could be with you doing this. That was my job. They're not going to let me. I know. Um, Miracle Hearts, that would be terrible. Yes, it would be. They would be scarred for life. You're right. No, no water in the quarry. There are just so many questions I have. For one, I think the shoe was planted in the bushes. There is no way the dogs would have missed a smelly shoe. That tells me he never wore it. Or he may have wore it, just not very often. So I'm going to... So one of the things that got me kind of curious about, I didn't go much further down here um, because it was very windy that day. But there's an area over here where, you know, in Psychic Sleuth, she was talking about, she's not only talking about areas where you could find evidence, but where you may find him too. And one this bend here, this all washes up in this little corner and it's sandy over here. And that reminded me of something she said, some an area where things collect in a in like a bay or something. And that's what this reminded me of. So Hi, Jill. How are you doing? Where garbage can co collect. Yes. And this part right here is exactly what made me think of that. Yeah, and now all the water's rising, which means the water is going to come and wash over this area and bring more things up in there that could be found. And I'm sure there's other areas like this around. And it was kind of funny because when we came here in the parking lot was a police officer. I was like, really? What's that for? And then I started walking and I'm like, oh, maybe he's here for the the shamrock thing. Okay. I have been thinking about the marina because she mentions boats, barges coming in and out. There is only one spot for that in TR, but it's right next to the Coast Guard. Yeah. Right. Right. Hey, Alondra, thanks for watching the replay, hon. So, yeah, um... I'm just trying to think here of. No, no. <laughs> okay, so this was the Woodland Dunes. We we um happened to pass a mother and two children, and I was saying hello to them. Yeah, I don't think we'd have to have a whole party out, party out here hunting or searching. All right, what? Oh, yeah. Okay, so off of Highway VV, before you get to B and turn to go towards the um, K 
camp, the girls' camp, there is the there's two areas. The side that I am I'm on has a quarry. Um, it was fenced off, gated off, so we couldn't get in there. Well, we couldn't get in there by car. Um, but we did get a glimpse of the area, and there is water there. Um, and then the quarry, but without getting permission, we wouldn't be able to go search that area. But across the street is this place, and one of the sites that I watched mentioned this no dumping sign. So I wanted to go across the street here. what it looked like. So we drove across the street here. We got out of the car. We looked around. Um, but we didn't really... think that this would be a good area either. No dumping. Because there's people in and out of here a lot. You can tell it's... There's all kinds of um, tracks in there, and there's a house back in here, here way, way back. Here. And um, we just didn't feel like this would be an area that they would put him... But we still got out and looked around. So as you can see, there is a house back there. So house back there or a building back there. And it was, there's a lot of water there. That's another reason why we didn't go tra traipsing around. But I did walk up the little hill here to see what I could see as far as what was over on the other side. This is back here where it says no dumping. Yeah, no dumping and there's all kinds of garbage back there. That's a house there. House and field. And then anywhere else that we could have looked was wet. So that is some of where I went that day. Um, like I said, I tried. Oops, I tried to hit a lot of the areas that Psychic Sleuth and some of the other psychics talked about in in their visions that they're seeing. So. I am hoping that this little boy is found soon. I really am. Um, I don't see Jesse and Katrina getting out of jail anytime soon. Um, yeah, I don't see that happening at all. 
not with what the police have found out between the neglect between the two kids. The two kids. We all know that we can search and search and search areas. Um, you can have different search parties go to the same area, and not find anything, and then a certain search party goes, and they find them, even though that area's been searched already. So just keep that in mind, especially with the weather changing things, um, the water that you're getting down there in two rivers is rising, and it's going to make things move around. So areas that were previously searched are going to have to be searched again, most definitely. And I don't know. I may be back down in Two Rivers again. You know, I've got my Indiana trip coming up, and then we'll see what happens. If he's not found um, by the middle or towards the end of April, I will probably make my way back down there. And I would love to meet up with Cassie and Loves, those in that area. Um and see you firsthand and, and talk to you and get your ideas as to where you think needs to be searched and, you know, look at some of those areas too. But I'm praying that he's found before then. So thank you everyone for joining me tonight. Um, for listening to the updates. I will keep you updated on this case if anything else comes out um, between now and my time in Indiana. I will still put it on the Facebook group. I'll still put it um, on the Facebook page and I'll still put it in the community posts. And then um, I will try to go live while I am in Indiana. So if anything breaking happens, um, I'll try to to get online when I can and give you an update. All right, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, please say a prayer for this family. Um, they need our support, our love, and um, just to keep, keep Elijah's name out there. Keep searching. Even if a place has been searched, search it again and search it your own way. Um, I've shown you some things tonight, and um, hopefully that will help you when searching. Make sure that if you see a big stick pile and tree branches over it, you move those tree branches and you look at the bottom of that stick pile and look at the dirt to make sure it hasn't been disturbed. Thank you so much. I will be back tomorrow night. Um, with another part of Tabitha's story. So if you don't know Tabitha's story, if you go to Beyond the Evidence on um, YouTube, there is a playlist with her story there. Hang on. Oh, have a good night. Thank you. Um, so catch up on her story, and um, we'll be going to her uh, memorial walk on the 5th. If you're going to be in the Tipton area on the 5th, Delphi on the 6th, or Indianapolis on the 7th, please join us um, for the memorial walks. I can't wait to see those of you who do come. Jake says, you know, another thing that bothering me and not to be changing the subject, but the Sebastian case that breaks my heart. Yes. I am going to do his case on Saturday. I was supposed to do it on Monday, and I did not have internet because of the weather. Um, so I am switching it to Saturday. I will be doing his case on Saturday. You're welcome, Lollipop. Glad I could, could give you some answers. All right, everyone, have a good night, and I will see you tomorrow.